The uh, Dragon cargo ship, which arrived at the station late last month, uh, carried opals and another large payload in its unpressurized section, its trunk. It also carried uh, many, many other science payloads inside the uh, freight carrier. A number of new experiments that have come to space designed to take advantage of the low Earth orbit environment. Uh, one of these new experiments is called Biotube Micro, and it's focused on how plants sense and respond to gravity. The principal investigator, Dr. Carl Hazenstein, joins us this morning from his office at the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. Dr. Hazenstein, people have been looking at how plants do in space for a long time. Uh, generally, how do they do? Well, um, generally, they do quite well, especially once they get exposed to the proper environment. Initially, we did not know what it means to grow plants in the absence of gravity, but it turns out it wasn't gravity that was the culprit in not succeeding um, with plant growth. It was the lack of convection, and as a result, the distribution of gases and so forth that prevented proper development. But we have come a long way and learned how to do it in the meantime. So we can grow plants quite well. The gravity is still a factor, right? What, what caused you to, to be focused on that aspect? Well, um, it's a conundrum for more than 100 <laughs> years to find out why every tree grows upright and uh, anchors itself in the soil. And this basic question as to how tiny cells that don't have specialized um, features such as we have in our vestibular apparatus are able to sense and respond to gravity is just puzzling. And one of the aspects of uh, detecting how these things work um, ideally requires to remove gravity as a factor. And this way we can gradually test how individual components of this uh, system that makes plants sense and respond to all kinds of stimuli um, respond to gravity, and that's what this experiment is about. Okay, uh, take us through through your plan. Then, what are you going to be? What have you sent to space, and what are you going to be doing in that hardware uh, on orbit? Well, um, the BioTube Micro is an external shell that contains the actual experiment, and the, ex the actual experiment consists of so-called uh, magnetic um, chambers. And within these chambers, we have a series of exactly 10 magnets that are aligned so that they generate a very strong magnetic field. Inside this field, we distort this uniform magnetic field by, you could call it, um, magnetic lenses. They're in reality um, ferromagnetic wedges. And what does that have to do with how plants respond to gravity? These magnetic gradients that result by inserting these wedges into the uniform magnetic field um, exert what we call a magnetophoretic force. And that force is specific for diamagnetic compounds, such as the ameloplasts that are the suspected gravity sensors. It, it sounds like and, you're you're manipulating the gravity pull on 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 these parts of the plant. That's correct, but we don't exert a pull; we exert a push. Um, these high-grade magnetic fields repel these starch-filled um, ameloplasts, and by doing so, they produce the same effect that we see under the influence of gravity, without having any other. Uh, cellular uh, component exposed to gravity. So we can pinpoint whether the ameloplast is actually doing the, um, the initiation uh, of the sensing and um, response to gravity by virtue of um, uh, moving them around in their um, the respective um, cells. We, we call them statocytes. Very interesting. Uh, do, the, do the crew members participate in this in some way? Um, not really. They were um, helpful in stowing the, the hardware into the express rack on uh, ISS, but the actual experiment is uh, entirely controlled uh, from KSC. Okay. Now, I assume then that you've flown this on Dragon, you're going to get these samples back. What, what do you do with them when you get them? 
Well, we, we will um, analyze uh, different things. Uh, one is the distribution of these amyloplasts. Um, after we have seen downlink video to indicate whether we obse observe actually curvature in the roots. So we have a video equipment uh, that takes pictures in the infrared region of this, um, uh, of this spectrum. And we can see if the plants, um, if the roots curve. When we come back, we will, cor we will correlate the um, distribution of the amyloplasts within these data sites to the observed curvature, and we will also um, do a series of genetic tests to see if um, gene expression has changed um, in the growth conditions that we had in space. At the same time, we do so-called um, immunocytolocalization of uh, relevant proteins that are responsible for the growth response of uh, cells and, or roots in general. So there's still plenty of study to be done uh, once uh, you get the samples back. Yes, indeed. Now, I, I found it very interesting that I saw that you ran this experiment on the last flight of Columbia, and we're still able to get some results back from downlinked images, right? Yeah, that's correct. Um, it, it was unfortunate that we could not get the, our biological material back, uh, but the downlink suggested strongly that we had curvature as we had expected, but we were not able to confirm this because we never received the actual um, plant material. Is, is your goal to simply improve way plants grow in space, or does this have applicability on Earth? Well, um, any time you have um, a better or deeper understanding as to how plants perform and respond to environmental cues or problems, you are bound to uh, benefit processes on Earth as well. So um, while we clearly want to establish a means of uh, directionally controlling plant growth in space, we also... Uh, want to use that gained knowledge for uh, improvement of uh, plants on, on Earth. Dr. Hazenstein, thank you for uh, taking a few minutes for us this morning, uh, and good luck with the experiment. Thank you so much. Carl Hazenstein is the uh, principal investigator of BioTube Micro.